Hello sophomores, hope you all had a great weekend. Let's get ready for week eight lessons. Today we're gonna to be looking at week eight, lesson 34. Let's get started. But first, the beloved joke of the day. What do sea monsters eat? Fish and ships. <laughs> all right, so we are on day one of this week, which is lesson 34. The video you should be watching right now is ELA G10W8L34. The text that we're going to be reading all throughout the week is called A Dose of What the Doctor Never Orders. And today um, we will be engaging in a first read and then you all will be writing a summary of the text. And then when you get down to the lesson itself, make sure you read the materials section so you can be reminded of what materials you need for today. The learning target for today is I can complete first read annotations to help with comprehension and future analysis of the text. As I said before, the text is called A Dose of What the Doctor Never Orders. And just like every first lesson of a new week, we will be engaging with the first read today. Okay, let's talk through the read, think, talk, write protocol before we engage in the model. So today for the read section, there's some background information you need to read about. It says the story is about Jim Bai and his quest to work his way out of poverty. He encounters a rich man who suggests a life of hard work and careful saving. What you have to do today is read a dose of what the doctor never orders. And like you always do, perform the steps of the first read routine, which is the notice, annotate, connect, respond, and use the first read guide fiction to help you. Um, but as you're engaging in the first read, pay particular attention to the interaction Jim Bai has with the wealthy man and what is offered as a prescription for wealth and future prosperity. For the think section today, you're going to think about those individuals in society who have achieved great wealth. So anyone you know in society that has achieved great wealth, maybe you know them personally, maybe you don't know them personally, anyone that has achieved great wealth, and then answer this question or think about this question. Have you ever wondered how they got to where they are? So I really just think like, how, you know, how did they get to where they are? Have you, have you thought more about it? And um, here's just a, a screenshot of the first read guide fiction, which you'll find um, in your packet. For the talk section today, you're going to talk with someone about the following questions. What was the wealthy man's attitude towards wealth? And compare this with your attitude towards wealth. So you'll have to definitely make sure you're annotating around what was the wealthy man's attitude towards wealth so that you can then engage in a conversation with someone um, and compare it to what your your own attitude is towards wealth. And then for the writing section today, um, on the note catcher, you're gonna confirm your understanding of the text by writing a summary. So you'll write a full blown summary of the text um, on the note catcher. And speaking of note catchers, this is a screenshot of the note catcher you need to complete for today. And it's listed um, right below the lesson. And then finally, you're gonna close out with first sharing your writing with someone. And then you're gonna read a book for 20 minutes and document your reading in the reading log. So the model today will be around the first read of our text, The Dose of What the Doctor Never Orders. I wanted to quickly just go over um, the part of the lesson that relates to this so we can just be on the same page of what you have to do for today. So for the reading section, of course, it tells you the background information about, you know, the stories about Jin Bai and his quest to work his way out of poverty. And then he encounters a rich man who suggests a life of hard work and careful saving. And so what you have to do is you have to read um, the text, perform the steps of the first read routine, which is the notice, annotate, connect, and respond using the first read guide fiction. But um, the main thing to pay attention here to here is that you have to uh, specifically look for and learn more about the interaction Jin Bai has with the wealthy man and what is offered as a prescription for wealth and future prosperity. So you have to complete all the steps of the first read routine but you also have to um, make sure you're paying specific attention to um, the interaction between Jin Bai and the rich man and what is uh, the rich man's prescription for how to attain wealth. So today's quick model is really gonna be around that last part of the read section, um, which is listed here again, pay particular attention to the interaction Jin Bai has with the wealthy man and what is offered as a prescription for wealth and future prosperity. So um, I'll sort of read the first couple of paragraphs with you, um, sort of take notes in the margins, annotate for um, these things, and then help you sort of pull out some of the most important points um, that are in relation to Jin Bai and how he interacts with um, the wealthy man. And then you'll be set up for success to engage in the rest of the first read and complete the rest of the lesson for today. Let's get started with paragraph one. For each of the 404 bodily ailments celebrated 
physicians have produced infa infallible remedies, but the malady which brings the great distress to mankind, to even the wisest and cleverest of us, is the plague of poverty. Okay, so I have in quotes here, because it's a direct quote from the text, plague of poverty brings greatest distress to mankind. So the text opens up by telling us that, you know, during this time period and this specific part of the, the world, um, that there are, um, like, for each of the 404 bodily ailments that physicians have, um, you know, fixed, so all the, like, deadly diseases, the actual, the biggest distress to mankind, the biggest disease to mankind is this plague of poverty. Um, so poverty actually is, the, is, is worse than all those other diseases that, that inevitably kill people. Let's keep going. Is there a treatment to cure this? A poor man asked the gentleman of great wealth. My dear fellow, the rich man replied, if you have lived till now without knowing such things, you have wasted precious years. In matters of health, the best time to take preventative measures is before you reach the wrong side of 40, and you have left this consultation until rather late. However, I observe certain factors which may yet pull you through. Your custom of wearing deerskin socks, for example, and, the, and bamboo clogs with, the thick, with thick leather soles. If that indicates your approach to life, we may even make a moderately rich man out of you. I have, it so happens, an excellent nostrum called the millionaire pill, and I shall give you the prescription. And then if you go in the text, nostrum basically means like uh, a prescription or like a medicine that like someone who's not qualified to give actually gives out. Um, and so for this part of the text, I wanted to write in the margin this. I wrote, wealthy man believes that poor man is asking these questions too late. So the wealthy man thinks the poor man should have been asking how to get richer earlier on in life. But he said, but there is still hope for him because of his current habits. His, he isn't like um, overspending. He's a little bit modest in what he wears. So he has, there's hope for him that he can still get rich. And then he prescribes him the millionaire pill, which is what we're going to talk about right now. So here are the, the different uh, parts of the prescription for the million, millionaire pill. We have early rising, five parts. The family trade, 20 parts. Work after hours, 10 parts. Economy, seven parts. Sound health, seven parts. So he suggests five key ingredients in this pill. Obviously, this pill is not real. Um, this man's not a real doctor. Um, if there was a millionaire pill that actually existed out there, I'm sure many of us would have a prescription for it or try to get a prescription for it. I'd be taking it every day if I could. But he's sort of giving some advice to this poor man. Um, like this is like some a recipe for success when trying to become a millionaire. So let's just pick apart each one real quick. Early rising, five parts. I suggest that, um, or I believe that this man is suggesting that if you get up early, you have more opportunities in life because other people are still sleeping. Like, you know, the expression, the early bird gets the worm. The family trade, 20 parts. We'll talk more about this later, but I think like if you're doing something that your family has a lot of like experience in and you have a lot of resources in, you can make a lot of money from it. That's why it's probably the, the biggest. Work after hours, 10 parts. Like that's pretty obvious. If you put in overtime, you're gonna make more money. Economy, seven parts. So just being, um, you know, paying attention to the economy, making sure you're spending and saving appropriately and sound health, seven parts, because, you know, if you're not in sound health, um, physically or mentally, then you're not, doesn't matter how much money you have, you're going to die, right? Or, ha or live a, a really tough life because you're spending so much money on medical treatments. All right, let's keep going. Grind the ingredients thoroughly, use common sense to get the proportions correct, mix carefully, swallow, and, and inwardly digest twice daily. And there is no reason why you should not become a millionaire. However, during treatment, it is imperative to abstain from certain noxious things. So here, basically, it said that if the poor man uses common sense and pays attention to proportions, so not you know getting up too early or sleeping in late or, or, or um, working too much after hours, like you know paying attention to the proportions of what he suggested in the millionaire pill, He'll become a millionaire. Um, and then down here, um, he talks about nox noxious things, noxious things. So um, it, it tells you that that means like sort of like poisonous or, or deadly things. So um, we're not going to read lines 10 to 25 together, but definitely read those on your own because th that's where uh, the wealthy man lists off the 16 things that he says the poor man should, should always avoid doing, should never do. And we're not going to read them now because we're actually going to talk about them in another lesson, but it's important that you read them on your own because he, he makes it very clear. It, he, go, he goes over very, uh, over very specific things that the um, poor man should never do if he's trying to be wealthy. We are going to read a few more paragraphs together. Let's start with 26. 
All these things are more deadly than blister, fly, drugs, or arsenic. I need hardly say, of course, that to taste any of them is fatal, but the very idea of them must never enter your head. So according to the wealthy man, these six these 16 things are deadly not only if he does them, like, you know, not not deadly in the sense that he'll die, but deadly in the sense of, like, he'll, it'll, it'll kill his hopes of becoming a millionaire. He's also saying he, if he thinks about doing them, it's also going to be deadly. They're going to be deadly. They're going to kill his hopes of being a millionaire. And to me, this is suggesting that, like, it's not only just the act of doing something, it's the temptation you have of doing something. Because if you have the temptation and it's always there, it's going to be hard to get rid of it. And eventually you're going to act on it. And then paragraph 27, he bent close to his questioner's ear, a little ear, full of the promise of poverty, and the man listened in rapture, accepting every word as a drop of pure gold. He resolved to follow this wealthy person's advice and to work unremittingly from morn till night. So the poor man is very interested and it's clear that he is listening to every word and will take the wealthy man's advice to heart. Clearly this man, um, you know, has lived a life of um, poverty and doesn't really have a plan to how to get out of poverty. And so this man's advice is very specific and reasonable. He's wealthy, he prescribes him this pill. It, it's clear that he is gonna take his advice to heart and will do whatever it, ta it takes to become a millionaire. That's what he wants in life, that's his main goal. Okay, so um, now you have to basically read through the rest of the text, complete the first read routine. Don't forget to go back and read lines 10 to 25. And then after you complete the first routine, uh, routine, make sure you complete the rest of the lesson. Tomorrow's lesson is lesson 35, and the learning target is, I can complete close read annotations to analyze how the use of dialogue enhances the intended message of a text. So today, um, when you finish, you'll be done with the first read, you'll have a gist of the text, and then, as always, the second lesson of, of a week is a close read, and we're going to dig into the close read routine tomorrow, um, but specifically look at the use of dialogue and how it enhances the intended message of the text. Thank you for learning with me today. As always, it's a pleasure to spend some time with you. Just a few reminders before I go. Number one, don't forget to talk about your lesson with someone. Number two, read 20 minutes and complete a reading log entry. The reading log is at the front of your packet. And number three, practice reading fluency using the first or second page of your weekly reading. And again, directions to that are at the start of your packet, at the top of your packet too. Email your teacher for support if you need, need any help whatsoever. You should know their email address at this point, but if not, the format is listed here. It's firstname.lastname at Detroit K12.org. Have a great rest of your day, and remember, keep learning.